Thanks for joining us for an Every Nation Sunday Sermon. This message is from our Hammersmith congregation. For more information on our church, or to see how you can be involved, please visit everynation.co.uk. I want to minister to you this morning on a topic which is really dear to my heart. And I'm really praying that this morning God will open up some things to you and open your heart in a way that maybe you've never had that experience before. So I'm going to be speaking to you from Matthew 10, verse 7. And it's very simple. It says, As you go, Jesus said, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received and freely give. And I think we need to take a moment and just take a recount of what is it that we have freely received from Jesus? What have you received from Jesus? What is it that he has given you? Any ideas out there? Come on, shout them out. Love, salvation, freedom, music talent. Yes, David, good one, yes. Forgiveness. There are so many things that we got absolutely free when we accepted him into our lives. When he presented himself and we said, yes, come. So freely we have received, and freely we need to give. But it's not that we just received once. We continually receive freely on a daily basis. Am I right? So I want you just to close your eyes for a moment. Please don't go to sleep. But just close your eyes for a moment. I want you just to imagine something for me. And the thing I want you to imagine is a funnel. Okay, just draw a picture of a funnel in your mind. I don't mean a funnel that's on a ship. I mean one of those other funnels. Okay, has everybody done that? Have you got it? Have you drawn that picture in your mind? So, okay, you, I wonder how many of you drew your funnel looking like this? You can look at me now. Anybody, did anybody draw your funnel like that? One person, okay, one who drew, you, drew your funnel like this? No? 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 What about that way? Who didn't draw a funnel? <laughs> Who didn't know what I was talking about? Okay, so how many of you drew like that? M- most of you, okay? It's amazing, okay? Most of us will draw a funnel in that way so that we know which way up it is. That is the way that we would draw a funnel. I think, um, you know, how many of you enjoyed seeing France stand up? Was that good? Come on, France, I need you for a moment. Come and help me for a moment. Would you do that? Because want, you want to see more of him, hey? He's such a handsome dude, you know, so come on down, my friend. Okay, so I, I want to just use France as an illustration, if I may. <clears throat> France, I may, okay. So I want you to make a funnel. Okay. Uh, put, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Make a funnel, okay. <laughs> we are family, it's okay. <laughs> okay, make like a funnel. Okay, head up, head up. Okay, isn't this the picture of what we should be like to freely receive? That we stand like this, head high, looking to heaven. And when do we do that? How many of you were doing this in worship this morning? You had your hand up, you were, had your head up, and you were worshiping God. And what is it saying to you? Lord, just pour into my life. I'm open. And when you put your hands up, what does it mean? I submit, I surrender. I give my life. I've given myself away. It says, Lord, examine me. Look into me. Look into my heart. Look into who I am. Whatever needs changing, change me. In Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus said this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor 
as yourselves. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. All the law and the prophets hang on this thing of what is in your heart. What is down in your heart? What is going on in your heart? What is God doing with your heart? It is so easy to become an upside-down funnel. Would you like to be an upside-down funnel? Okay. Open, open the legs. White. Okay. Hands up. Upside-down funnel. And many of us and many people live an upside-down funnel life. Where are they drawing from? They're drawing from the world. They're drawing all their influence from the world. And maybe with a little bit of luck, there's a teensy, weensy little hole at the top that the Lord is trying to get into. Maybe they're going to church every week and there's just this tiny little gap of where the Lord can speak to them. But most of the time, they're drawing their energy, what they believe, what they think from worldly values. So it's very easy to do that because it's so much easier to balance that. It's much more difficult to balance it this way around. And the temptation is to continually go back to closing our heart towards God and putting our heart towards the world. So could you go back to where you were before with your... Thank you very much. Head up. Acts 28 says this. No, so I am. <clears throat> He's strong. He does surfing. So <clears throat> I don't know if you can surf in the Thames, but anyway, so you can have a go at it. So Jesus, um, Paul, Paul was, was speaking one day in Acts 28, and he said this. When they had appointed a day for him, they came to Paul at his lodging in great numbers. And from morning till evening, he expounded to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both of the law of Moses and from the prophets. And some were convinced by what he said and others disbelieved. And disagreeing amongst themselves, they departed after Paul had made one statement. He said this, The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will indeed hear, but you will never understand. You will indeed see, but you will not perceive. For your people's hearts have grown dull. People's hearts grow dull. And their ears can hearly hear. And their eyes have been closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart. And turn, and I would heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. God is seeking people who will listen. So how can we be open to that relationship? And what it is, it's all about the heart. Proverbs 4, verse 23. I hope it's up there. It's not. Next one. Okay. It says this. We must keep our hearts with all diligence, for out of them spring the issues of life. Let's keep our hearts right. Are you doing all right, Boo? Good. <laughs> what you put in, in it is what you put out. So what you put in is what you're going to get out. So if you put garbage in, it's garbage out. Our heart is the tap of our soul. So if you're putting in good stuff, you can turn the tap and you're going to release good stuff. You put in garbage, t- turn the tap, you're going to get rubbish out the bottom. But what we're trying to do is feed in from God, having a pure heart, turning it on, and being able to feed it accurately to somebody beneath. That is the whole point. Proverbs 23 verse 26 says this. Is he, is he, is he struggling here? I think he needs some help. Is it two guys can help him, please? Yeah, come on. Maybe someone else. Is there anyone, another guy? Come on, run, man. This guy is really... Really struggling. Thank you very much. Now, isn't that a reminder of some story in the Bible? Isn't that a story? You know, I mean, do you remember that story? Something about Moses? You remember that? And there were two guys called Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello, her. And here's Moses right in the middle. Okay, so when they were in a battle with the Amalekites or some other ite or other, 
there was this big eight war going on. And he had in his hand his staff. And when he raised his staff, he was victorious. But every time he let down his staff, the enemy was winning. And he couldn't, he just couldn't keep his arms up all day in order to do it. And every so often he would drop his arms and then his army was being routed. So Aaron and her got a bright idea, let's help him. And they came and stood like that, holding his arms until the battle was won and all the ites were disposed of, whichever ites they were. That is so in our life because for us to keep our arms up is not easy on our own. That's why we need people around us. And this is a picture of discipleship. This is what discipleship is. Because we cannot do it alone. Just say to your neighbor, I can't do it alone. Can't do it alone. We are needing an Aaron and a Her or a Sheila and a whatever on either side to help us to, to complete this race so that our heart remains pure. So our heart, the tap of our lives, is open to receive the Word of God, to put it into place so that we can be a dispenser. I think that uh, Moses needs a big round of applause, as does Aaron and her. Thank you so much. Had your exercise for the day, Ruth. So, yeah. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Uh, Where have I got to? Oh, that's, that's the Moses thing. So Proverbs 23, verse 26 says, My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. Let's give him our hearts. If we give God our hearts, then, and we can observe his ways, then we are able to help. Then we are able to get involved. So Jesus said, freely you have received, and freely you need to give. We need to freely give. We need to be a place where, as we have received, that we give. And with a funnel, I love the idea of a funnel because it's not like a tube, which is what you get in, you just sort of squirt it all over the show. This is accurate. You put this into the top of a bottle so you can actually feed it into a bottle. So you can put a lot of water in the top coming from a big open tap and feed it into a, into a, through a bottleneck. And so it is that with God, God accurately gives us stuff on a daily basis that we can give to others. He's trying to feed and speak into our lives so that when we go about our daily business, we're going to bump into people, we're going to meet people, and we're going to have an accurate word for them. But we need to have the expectation in our heart that that's going to happen. If our hearts are, we well, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm just a bit embarrassed to go and talk to someone, you know. I just, I'm just not sure if I can do that. If we have that in our heart, it's never going to happen. Whereas if we have an openness, if we are convicted, if we want to be a channel for God, He will pour and He will pour more and more into our lives so that we can freely give to other people. In Luke 4, verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, proclaim freedom to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. How many of us were oppressed before we received Jesus? I was oppressed. We were all oppressed by something, but when he comes on the scene, freedom comes. And in some ways, how can we walk past someone, you can see they're in chains, you can see they're oppressed, and we've got the key to open that. And I believe that God is wanting each and every one of us to really get activated in order to proclaim freedom, because he shows and he proclaims freedom to every human being on the earth. And we are set at liberty in order to become free and to free others. That's what Jesus is saying. 
So we become free to love. We become free to be channels of goodness. We become free to extol his heart to those who don't know him. Free to love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know about you, but do you love this new condition of your heart? Do you really love it? Do you, do you experience the goodness and the greatness of your life, in your life? If so, it's a great thing to give away. Give your life away through giving Jesus to others. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, I believe it, it puts this all together into one scripture. And for me, this is the scripture that we try to live. It's, for we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art. Why don't you just look at your neighbor and say, you're a work of art. And I know that in a British context, that's it. You're a work of art. You know, anyway, so. But you're a work of art. You're created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used. Ready to be used. You got that? For good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set, so that, that we would walk in them. Anybody want to live this? Living the good life. That doesn't mean having a cow and a sheep and a goat in the middle of the country, meh, and just thinking you're living the good life. That's not the good life. Living the good life is doing what Christ asked you to do. But you live the good life which he's prearranged and made ready for you to live. He set it out there for you. It's there for you to go to. It's there if we will just respond, turn our tap on so that what he pours in, we can pour out. And when we start doing that, God has an amazing plan for your life. He's going to do it in your life, and he wants you to become an expression of himself. This scripture will help you. Revelations 12, verse 11, it says, They, say, I'm the they. I'm the they, okay? They overcame him, that is the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Now, how many of you are convinced that the blood of the Lamb... Ooh, the blood of the lamb will help you. Is that the right one? No, what is happening here? Oh, my vast away. What's happening here? Oh, my, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, no, there it is. Ah, there we go. So, so the they is, is people that we can really, the they out there are the ones that we can affect. And we do it by reaching into their lives. We take who we are and express it to people who don't know it. And we know that the blood of the Lamb has saved us. How many of you know that? It is the blood of Jesus Christ has washed us. He's forgiven us so that we have right standing before God. Everybody understands that. But in this scripture, it's interesting. He says, for the, it, it says they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. That's number one. Second part, by the word of their testimony. And in this sentence, it's given the same emphasis. It's not that one is greater than the other in this sentence. The word of their testimony is as important as the blood of the Lamb. We all, if we're a Christian, have a testimony. But we should not just have a testimony of, you know, 1948. Just, just, as the war finished, I came to Jesus. That's not a testimony that is relevant to somebody today. The testimony for somebody today is to yesterday, God spoke to me about you. He told me I might meet you. And I believe in my heart that there's something saying that, that this or this or that could be happening in your life. And I'd like to pray for you. Is that okay? That is a testimony. That is powerful because God is speaking to you about someone who doesn't know him. We have testimonies. But the great thing about testimonies 
is what it means. Testimony means to do again. It's not just a once-off event. It's that if I speak about a testimony, then he wants to do it again. Have any of you ever been healed by the Lord? You have a testimony. Rona can go up to someone, I know this to be true, right now, and if you had a nosebleed, she would say, I had nosebleeds, but God healed me, and I want to pray for you. Because it happened to me, he healed me, he wants to heal you. If you were saved, I was saved. This has happened in my life. This is the freedom I've experienced. He wants to free you. Let me help you to get there. And the Bible is full of testimonies. Simple testimony is when Moses was leading the children of Israel out of uh, captivity, they got to the Red Sea. Big problem. Sea, army behind, they're stuck. And the only thing he had was his rod. But he struck the water, the water opened, and they walked through the Red Sea. Amazing. I mean, what an incredible testimony. And as they walked around in the desert for the, all those years, they collected some of those testimonies. They put into this ark. They had an ark of the covenant, which is also known as the ark of the testimony. And into that ark of the testimony, they put a piece of manna to remind them that God fed them every day. They put in the rod that Aaron had that bloomed and had flowers. They had that in there. And they had the Ten Commandments stuck in that box as well. And when Joshua took over, he was confronted with a similar thing as Moses was, was confronted with in order to get to the promised land. Here was a river in massive flood. And he had to get all the people across the river in flood season. God told him to go in flood season. God wanted to make a point. So when he got to the water, he sent the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Testimony into the water first. And as they put their feet into the water, it split. The Jordan split. And the whole of the people of Israel could go through. He did it again. And it was the Ark of the Testimony that made the way for God to do it again. People, testimony is such an important part of who we are. But it takes a risk to have a testimony. Uh, it takes a risk for us to have a testimony. You know, you, you have to go to places that maybe seem a little bit dangerous. You have to step into places which you feel uncomfortable. And I want to tell you, God will take you there. But when you step in the joy of seeing the result of the fact that, first of all, I stepped in there. I, was, I, I didn't want to do it, but I took the risk. When you take that risk, it's like, yes, I took that risk. It's not about the result. It's I took the risk to pray for someone. I took the risk to speak to my person, uh, to somebody about Jesus Christ. I took the risk to talk to my mom and dad. I took the risk to talk to that neighbor who I absolutely detest. Now, whatever it may be, I took the risk. That's what God is celebrating, is when we share our testimony. You are taking the blood of the Lamb. You share your testimony. God deals with it. It's not your problem. So when you pray for someone, it's his business. But what he needs is for you to do it. What he needs is for you, having freely received, is to freely give so that liberty can come. And when we do this, something amazing happens. Isaiah 35 says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. And the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched land shall become a pool and the thirsty land 
springs of water. Isn't that what we want to live in? Isn't that what we want to see? Wouldn't it be wonderful to live in that environment? But for us to do that, we need to realize this scripture is this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ needs you because his hope is stored in you. Christ needs you to take hold of his word and proclaim it. To take hold of your, his word and do it. To take hold of his word and become an Ephesians 2.10 person where you live the good life doing what God has asked you to do. And when you do that, you will have such joy in your life. Right now we're riding a bicycle. It's not just to ride a bicycle. It's not. As we ride a bicycle, we're asking God on the way, show us people we need to speak to. Help us identify who it is that we need to spend time with. Put us in circumstances where we can make a difference. And every time we do that, God shows up and puts people in front of us.